Hello, and welcome to American Government. I'm Dr. Carl Snook. Um, I'm going to, uh, in a minute, go over the syllabus for this course. Um, with each module, there's going to be an introduction video. Uh, right now, I'm in my office. You'll get to see several different parts of my uh, home, probably, depending on what's clean on a given day. We, we still have our Christmas tree up. So I thought, well, that's not very much in the spirit of things. See, look, I just messed up, right? They tell you all the time, don't tell them something that's very current because then you can never use this uh, video again. Well, this gives you evidence. This is, this is January, 2021, when I'm giving you this presentation. Well, anyway, uh, this is a fully online American government course that you're taking. Um, I, I uh, probably a lot of you have chosen to do this because of the coronavirus situation. Um, but, you know, we're, we're also pretty good at Kennesaw State at providing online education. So hopefully this will be up to standard. Now, what I'm uh, what I think that's important for you to understand, uh, first of all, is that sometimes for various reasons. Uh, there are discrepancies between the syllabus uh, and the due dates in D2L or something that, you know, somebody told you in an online forum or something. And one of the best ways to solve any discrepancies is to contact me. It, it's surprisingly easy. I am, I am so old, I am 51 years old. And, and when I was first in college, uh, when you you weren't the uh, professor didn't have office hours and you weren't uh, and you weren't in class, uh, you just didn't hear from the guy again until maybe the next week. You could you you could send an email by the time I was done, uh, but you know you you would have a tough time. Right? You'd end up calling the office and uh, leaving a message and quite often that message wouldn't be gotten for several days anyway. Well, we're in, we're in a great world of communication. So, you know, you're, you're, the 30 years have served you well. And, uh, and, and so getting in touch with me uh, is much easier than ever before. And from Mondays through Fridays, even though that you're not going to be able to have uh, a face-to-face -face office hours with me this semester. Uh, I've, I've said that I'll probably revisit this later in the semester, but my expectation is that, uh, you know, it'll probably be April before they let me have a vaccine. And let's hope that works. Um, but anyway, um, um, virtual appointments work very well and I'm willing to set them with anybody. Uh, I'm also willing to just answer your email questions if that's all you have. I encourage you to send the message through my campus email rather than D2L. Uh, the problem with D2L is that, you're, that you can't respond to it from the campus email. Your D2L message actually comes to me, um, but then I won't be able to respond to it. So I'll have to write you a, a response on, on your campus email anyway. And uh, when that happens, it could cause a delay. So the required textbook is the ninth edition of Cornell and Jacobson. I had a student ask me, well, I have the eighth edition. Um, you know, what is that okay? And I, I guess what I'd say is that anytime you have a change, um, of addition, there are some changes in what has been written. Uh, the difference between the 8th and ninth edition was pretty much it was talking about the Democrats now being in control of Congress. Um, we have a new president, right, or we, we will before the semester gets very old. So I, I think that, uh, you know, in some ways the ninth edition is already a little bit out of, uh, out of date. Um, if you can save a lot of money 
I guess all I can tell you is that if you use the ninth edition, you're safe. If you use the eighth edition, you have to worry that what's in the eighth edition is the same as what's in the ninth edition. Sometimes students think that that's worth it. Um, I, I tend to not, uh, I tend to discourage people in the interest of saving tens of dollars, uh, risking doing badly in a class that costs, you know, many hundreds of dollars. But that's ultimately your choice. The worst choice would be to not buy a textbook at all. Uh, in addition, I'm going to be asking you to pay attention uh, to current events. The, the current events quizzes this semester, you will have, um, you have eight current events quit, uh, quizzes. They'll each be worth four points. So in a course that's worth 190 total points, current events is a small but not negligible um, value to you doing well. Now, if I say, what, if you say, well, what should I know? And I say, you should know everything, that would be unfair. So what I'm going to, so the syllabus actually on its final page has a list for current events quizzes of the the days that of the days that the current events quiz will consider. After all, I have to make up the quiz before you take it. So for instance, the first week you will have from January 13th to 17th to uh, complete the quiz, um, but uh, it will cover the events of January 11th and January 12th. Now, I promise you that, or you see, some, some people would say, well, you should use the New York Times, or you should use the Washington Post, and other people say you definitely should not use the New York Times or the Washington Post. What I've decided instead is that you should use a news aggregator, um, a pretty good one, there are no perfect ones, but a pretty good one is realclearpolitics.com. And so what I've decided to do this semester is that every single question you will be able to find if you check realclearpolitics.com every day on its front page. Now, a lot of its front page is taken up by opinion columns. If there were to be a question related to an opinion column, I will tell you, I will tell you in advance before the quiz begins, before you would start to take the quiz, that you, uh, that you should read up on a particular article. Um, most semesters that doesn't happen. But sometimes, and I, I would say that since I've been doing this, this is I think the fourth semester, uh, it's not correct to say most of the time it doesn't happen. It's more correct to say two semesters it didn't happen at all. And two semesters it happened two or three times and uh, out of all eight quizzes. And, uh, and I would say I do not foreclose the possibility that I see an article that is very good in particular to read. Um, but it might not happen. Um, but what you do know is that along the left-hand side, uh, down to the bottom of the page, and over on the right, with the column, opinion columns being in the center, but down the, the left-hand side, and on the bottom, and over on the right, uh, is all sorts of data, um, news reports, uh, wire reports, public opinion polling, um, stock market results, whatever the most important news of the day is, uh, gets covered by Real Clear Politics. And so I encourage you to, uh, to find uh, those, uh, uh, to, to follow, uh, to follow Real Clear Politics during the, for most of the time it's going to be the week prior to the quiz. And uh, you will have um, and you have one week to take each quiz. So it's not going to be open for the entire time the module's open. In essence, what I'm hoping is that you do the discussion for each module and the current events quiz for each module 
during the first week of the module being open, and then during the second week of the module being open, you focus on the quiz or, you know, of course, the midterm and the final. Um, we're going to have six written discussions. I'm going to have a prompt. In most cases, there's going to be a video that you're going to watch and that you're going to react to. Uh, the videos tend to be short. Uh, there's going to be eight quizzes on course material, loosely um, the subject of each of the, of the modules. Uh, so, for instance, um, module number two, well, module number one is going to be about what's in the syllabus. Module number two, though, is going to be about chapters one, two, and three. So you'll have five questions. Now, the quizzes should be useful to you in preparing for the midterm. All eight quizzes put together are worth 40 points, which is the same as the value of the midterm. The midterm is worth 40 points. The final exam is worth 50 points. And then you're going to get 10 points for what I call attendance. It might better be called um, engagement. In essence, um, every, every week I'm going to check to see if you logged on to D2L that week. And if you didn't, you're going to lose points. And if you skip an assignment, you're going to lose points. Uh, usually what I do with the quizzes and discussions is I give everybody one free miss, and then after that, start deducting two points for each one missed. You shouldn't skip discussions, you shouldn't skip quizzes, you shouldn't skip current events quizzes. They all add up to be a lot of the points in the course. Over half of the points in the course are not the midterm and the final. Now I would say, that even though every assignment in this course is open book and open note, um, that um, a good number of students tend to not do well on the midterm and final if they don't study. So over and above, over and above the fact that you know you're going to have an open book and open note test, uh, you should make sure that you are prepared and that you know the answers before you take the exam. Um, they won't just be questions from the quizzes, although there will be a great deal of overlap. They won't just be uh, key terms at the end of the chapter, but there will be some overlap. Generally speaking, my goal is to have a mixture of questions from the book and from um, what you'll find from my voiceover slides. Every module, most every module is going to have a, a set of voiceover slides for each of the chapters that we cover. Also, I will be talking about this a bit in the uh, videos. Also, we will have review videos. And I expect that even though this is primarily an asynchronous course, we will have some reviews on uh, Microsoft Teams if there's any demand for it amongst the students in the class. Usually when I do reviews, I try to set two times, one um, in the morning and one in either the late afternoon or early evening uh, for students uh, to attend. Um, but I'll be asking you about that as we approach the time for the midterm exam. So you should read up on technical requirements. Obviously, if you can't get an exam to work, then you need a better computer, right? Not my fault, right? Not your fault, but it's something that needs to be fixed. And so make sure that you're able to access the D2L page prior to the uh, um, prior to using the, when the exams do. Uh, if you have problems on a quiz, contact me immediately. Don't, uh, uh, don't wait. Um, I, I, I've been using the term timeliness a lot of late. And I think that um, when it comes to 
when it comes to a quiz, uh, you know, if you if you tell me right away that you had a problem, it's very different than if I hear about a problem that you had a month later or three weeks later. Make sure you read up on, on the rules for that. Uh, no extra credit. If if somebody um, if, if somebody uh, has a opportunity uh, that I think is um, if, if somebody from the university presents to me an opportunity that I think would enrich your uh, learning, uh, then I might offer some bonus points to students. Sometimes this happens, usually this happens during the course of a semester, but you'll need to take advantage of it when it comes up because it's not generally my policy to have a student come to me who needs a few points right at the end and then where we make up an assignment. After all, uh, creating an assignment for one student obligates me to create that for every student. Um, it's not fair that, I always feel bad. I don't know if you do, right? But I always feel bad for that student who um, never complains and then nothing is ever changed on their behalf. And so, you know, if you are if you are a complainer, you shouldn't get an an advantage over a non-complainer. You that actually that 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 actually encourages complaining. So I think that I should just be fair to everybody from the beginning. And one way to be fair is to warn you that you can't expect at the end of the semester for me to raise your grade four or five points because you watched a video and told me about it. You had six videos to watch. Um, why should uh, uh, why should you have that opportunity later? On the other hand, uh, on the other hand, I try to be as fair as I possibly can to everyone, and I know that everybody has a slightly different um, set of learning styles. If you have a concern, any concern, please contact me. Please communicate. I can't fix a problem I don't know about, maybe by accident. But I, but I want to fix problems for people. Um, student successes, you know, that's that's why I'm here. That, that's you know, having somebody come to me and say, you know, I learned something from you, is ne next to being paid is the very best part of my job. Right, the last page of the syllabus is the course outline. Uh, it lays out when the uh, midterm and final are. It lays out the topics of each of the eight modules. Um, also, if you have a disability, um, make sure that you go to disability services and um, get them to send me a message as soon as possible. Uh, remember that that message, sometimes called a visa, um, does not fix anything. I then have it, and then you are supposed to contact me, and then we will work out the accommodation. And you can't fight City Hall. I, I'll, I'll give you the accommodation that Disability Services asks. But until I've been asked to do that, um, Quite often, it you know, you can't just assume that it got worked out. Um, but but I it is my goal, right? It's 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 my goal actually for every one of you to pass. I I, I want there to be that semester when everybody gets an A, and uh, uh, Dr. Schwint, who's the uh, director of the School of Government and International Affairs, will send me an email and he'll say. What's the matter with you, Carl? You gave everybody an A. And I'll say, well, you know, they all deserved an A. And you say, really? And then I'll show you them your work. And they'll say, yep, they all have over 90%. I guess you had to give them an A. Uh, the instructor dreams, right? Well, in any case, um, communication is the key to success. Please feel free to contact me. Uh, however often.
seek, ask, knock, and uh, we'll make sure that we uh, uh, we get things worked out for you. And I hope you all get the grade that you you want. And I hope it's because you deserved it. I'll, I'll talk to you again next week.